So in the last module, we saw how stimuli in the external world can be captured by our computer as long as it's rendered as a voltage. So in this module, we'll look at how your microcontroller does this job. That is, we'll look at the process of setting it up and then we'll look at the process of capturing the samples. So uh, on our microcontroller, which is our launch pad, we have several of the GPIO pins that play dual role. So what we mean by the dual role is we will choose their alternate function. So there are 12 pins which are called our 12 ADC pins, which are capable of receiving analog inputs, which are as rendered voltages, and then converting them to them to 12-bit numbers using the ADC module on board. So among these 12 ADC pins, two pins are the ones we're gonna focus in this course. One is PE2, and the other is PD3. This is referred to as analog in one, and this is referred to as the analog in four. By the way, we've already been using PD3 all along. This is our analog pin that was used to measure voltages. This was our way of measuring voltage on our circuit all along. But A in one, which is what we're gonna to use today, is gonna to be used to measure voltages from input device. So let's get started on looking at all the device registers that we have to manipulate to make ADC work. So like any device that we've looked at, in order to manipulate the device, we have to work with a initialization sequence. The initialization sequence is done once, or what we call as a setup sequence. And the setup sequence for ADC involves 13 steps. I'm gonna summarize the first few steps, the first one through uh, five steps are things that you already are familiar with, which are make sure that the GPIO pin here a GPIO pin for port E, pin two is properly configured. So which means we turn on the clock, we make it an input. So we manipulate a direction register. We enable its alternate function, which is the most Im important thing, which is different from what we were doing so far. So we, we enable its alternate function, and then we enable it, DN, we enable it, and once we are done with it, we have an other one which is an AM select function, we do that. So this is my five step sequence, which is something that you're already familiar with. So what is different to make it an analog ADC pin is the next sequence of steps. So our first step that's specific to ADC is we turn ADC clock. Like we turn on the clock here, we'll turn this one on. We do that by making sure that the RCGC zero bit 16 is set to one. So the next step we're gonna do which is step seven, is we're gonna configure the speed. And this device, the speed is the speed at which we're gonna capture our samples. There are multiple speeds ranging from one million samples per second all the way to 125K samples per second. And we affect that, we make that change by making sure that we manipulate these two bits. And for now, I'm gonna make these two bits zero, zero, which says that I've chosen the 
125k. So that's 125k samples per second, which is a minimum speed at which I can sample. The eighth step then is our sequencer. We have four sequencers. We're not going to worry about them. We're using sequencer three. Sequencer three is chosen, and we also set the priority of it. So because there are for sequencers, the priority is set by a 2-bit number here, and we're making it the highest priority by making it 0 among the 4. The step 9 is while, by, while I'm configuring the rest of the system, I'm going to disable. And when I'm done at the end, which is my last step, which is step 13, I will enable. This way I'm making sure that while I'm configuring it I can I can uh, make sure that the sampling doesn't occur. So I do that by manipulating this bit which is my activation bit. So I turn this off and I turn it on to affect that. So it goes from 0 to 1 eventually. So our next step is step 10 which is we choose the trigger that is when when we have a analog input connected it can be triggered by various mechanisms but in this class we're going to use a software initiated trigger so it means that I will not expect any interrupts or anything. I'm simply going to tell when I want to choose to sample and when I when I the sampling is done, I will read it myself. So and I do that by manipulating these three bits, these four bits here, and these four bits for us is going to be the simplest case which is all zeros which says that I'm using software as a trigger. Professor Garibaldi, how do we tell it which channel to sample? Okay, so everything we did here doesn't really tell us anything about what channel we're using. So our next step will involve exactly that, which is my step 11, which says that I want to choose channel 1. Uh, remember there are 12 channels, they go from 0 through 11. And so I'm going to choose channel 1 out of those. So 1 is the one I'm trying to choose. So I need to specify that. And I do that by writing a 0, 0, 0, 1 here. And that's my channel select. Channel is A in 1. Now is channel 1 always connected to PE2 or is that some kind of choice? It is always connected to... P P E two and it's hardwired and that's why we have we have selected the alternate function for P E two to be its alternate function which happens to be analog A in one. Uh, okay, one more step. So we have one last step left, step twelve, which involves manipulating these four bits. The only bit of real interest to us is this bit here which is the IE0 bit and what it's telling us is that we want a flag to be set we want a flag to be set when the sampling is complete set flag on sampling sample capture the other bits for now are going to be 0 here a 1 here and a 0 here. So that's going to be 0, 1, 1, 0 into this, which is a 6 is what we're going to write. So we do this once, and so next we're going to have to show you how to write software that actually does the conversion. Starts, waits for it to be done, and captures. That is correct. So we looked at the initialization ritual. Let's look at the, at the capture sample capture procedure. 
So to capture a sample, I'm going to follow this logic, which says start with initialization of the sampling by writing to this bit a one. So I make that bit a one. And then this, the ADC device starts is capturing. And then I'm going to check for a flag. So I'm going to check whether RIS bit three is a zero to indicate that it is busy. So if it's busy, I keep checking back again and again. And when it's one, it tells me that it's complete. The capture is complete. So once the capture is complete, I'm going to read the data. So I will read data, which means that I've done this busy step, which I found this to be zero for a good bit of time and eventually became a one. So I come down here and then I'm going to read this data. So read data. So the last thing I need to do is to make sure that I clear the flag. I clear this flag by writing a one here. So the act of writing a one there will make sure that this flag is flag goes back to a zero. So I'm ready for the next sample and then I return. I have a question. Do these registers act like memory? In other words, if I write a one to them, it'll become a one. If I write a zero, it'll become a zero? Well, these are really not memory registers. These are device registers. Oh. So it's, they don't behave like memory. They behave more like inputs and outputs to a device. So if I write to one register, it clears a bit and another register? Yeah, because Ooh. it's a memory mapped I.O. I see. All right, enough talking. Let's build it. All right.